Hello. Over the next two tutorials I will show you how to handle Ajax requests by getting the book list in the background instead of having the entire page load every time I am switching back and forward. First I need to make a point that from the Zend Framework's point of view there is absolutely no difference between the regular calls and the Ajax calls. Uh, to show you exactly what this means I created a little jQuery Ajax call that's going to hit the, one of our Zend Framework pages, the book list, and alert the response. Okay, so notice how the Zend Framework gives us the HTML code exactly the same way whether it is through the Ajax or through a regular HTTP connection. So there is no difference. So why do we bother with all of these extra things that we're about to do? Uh, well, uh, that's because what you could actually do is simply create a separate controller and action and view for your Ajax calls. And then just simply call those controllers and get it done and over with. However, what's happening is that a number of our controllers and actions uh, have the same logic both in Ajax and in the regular page views. So to avoid the duplicating of code, uh, we use these extra techniques and so as to differentiate between the um, XML HTTP and the uh, regular request. Uh, now a number of blogs out there and tutorials, uh, all they do is they check the type of request that comes into the server. Uh, so if it's XML HTTP or just regular HTTP. And then if it is XML HTTP, then they turn off the layout and the view um, manually so as to not have uh, all these extra bits, but just the variables. Um, that is not a fully proper way to do it in my opinion. It is definitely a way to do it, but it's not complete way of doing it. Uh, instead, the Zen Framework recommends you to use a technique called uh, Action Context Switcher, uh, which is going to switch, literally switch, the view script in use uh, based on the request coming in. So it does all the difficult work for us. Uh, so why is Context Switcher better than manually turning off the layouts? Well, that's because it assists us in specifying different alternatives to our current uh, view script. Uh, it allows us to send response, appropriate response headers easier, as well as a bunch of other things. Uh, this uh, context switch action helper is going to be set in the init method of the controller. Now this means that you have to do this to every controller that is going to be used for the Ajax request. Um, so you may think that it's going to be a lot of tedious work, which it definitely is. You got to review all of your existing controllers and modify them to allow the Ajax output accordingly. However, there is no real better way to do that um, because of the way the bootstrapping works. So what some people around the forums suggested is why not determine the, the web request type at the beginning of the application uh, and then disable the layouts accordingly at the bootstrap level. Uh, however, at the bootstrap level the URL is not being dispatched yet. So it does. It it has no way of telling the request at that point. So unfortunately, you still end up uh, having this big layout object in the memory. Maybe they'll do something about it in the next versions. But for now, um, this has to be done at the controller level. The context switcher uh, is called by getting 
the helper. And then we are going to tell which actions have alternative content. And of course you can put whichever actions that you have in the controller file. I'm going to use list action. Of course I'm not putting the word action afterwards. I'm just saying list. This is that. And at this point I'm specifying the type of alternative context for this action. And Zen Framework comes with two built-in ones, one for JSON and one for XML. I am going to be using JSON uh, because it works better for transferring variables between the front-end and the back-end. Uh, but I'll quickly show you how the XML one works because it is easier to understand. So if I want to use an XML alternative context, um, um, what Zen Framework is going to do is to look for a view script with an XML suffix. So for example, if I want to generate an XML output when an Ajax request is being made, uh, what I will do is create another view script that I am going to call list.xml.phtml so that's all there is to it if it notices an Ajax request and the alternative context is XML instead of looking into list.phtml it's going to look into list.xml.phtml okay now in this case I am just going to use JSON and all that's going to do is it's going to ignore all the view scripts entirely and it's going to serialize all the variables that I have on my view. So whatever I put inside of the view um, is going to be serialized and sent as a response to the JavaScript listener. Okay, so after I'm done telling the alternative context, I am just going to initialize the context and I am done. Okay, uh, the next thing is how exactly does this action context tell the difference between the request? Well, some JavaScript frameworks send a, s a different header to the server, but some don't. So to avoid the confusion, you have to send a special variable in your get or post called format. and in my little tester here, I am sending the format equals JSON as a part of the post. Uh, I can also do it as a part of the get if I want to, like that. But I prefer post for better security. So once it sees a format equals JSON variable coming in, it's going to switch over to the alternative context. So let's see what that's going to do for us. Okay, there you go. So instead of spewing out all of that uh, HTML code, instead it gives out this serialized JSON set of variables. Now at the moment it doesn't look anything sensible. It gives us a paginator object. Well that's because the only thing that we are passing onto the view is the paginator object. And then this paginator object is the one that actually uh, gets all the data. 